And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. <laughs> Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight we bring you a story that is, in my opinion, the greatest modern mystery classic of them all. Emlyn Williams' famous play, Night Must Fall. Virginia Field, star of the hit Broadway play Doe Girls and just back from Hollywood where she completed the Paramount picture The Perfect Marriage, will play the part of Olivia Green the young English woman who is so hypnotized and fascinated by the strange, half-mad Danny. Danny will be played by a fine young actor just returned from army service, Ian Martin. So here it is, Night Must Fall, starring Virginia Field as Olivia and Ian Martin as Danny. Well, gee, am I in the play too, Mr. Barnes? Oh, no, Dan, that's another Danny, a tough guy. Well, tough guys aren't always so tough. Why, do you know that lots of them are almost sissies when it comes to shaving? But not the man who shaves with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Because with Mole, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless cream for tender skins. That's right. Mole is the shaving cream that's heavier. The cream that's perfect for a wiry, hard-to-cut beard or tender skin. Because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight while your razor whisks them off one, two, three. So you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly with Mole, the heavier brushless cream for tender skins. Mole. Now for tonight's Mole mystery Night Must Fall. In the sitting room of a cottage located in a forest of Essex, England, sit three people. Mrs. Bramson, owner and mistress of the cottage, is in a wheelchair. Reading to her from a newspaper is Danny, Mrs. Bramson's houseboy and general handyman. Apart from these two, and apparently lost in her own thoughts, sits a young woman, Olivia Grain, Mrs. Bramson's niece and paid companion. The murderer committed the crime in the forest... He buried the woman's body shallow in the refuse heap behind the cottage of one Mrs. Bronson, who... And to think if my maid hadn't found her, that woman might still be lying there. Uh, think of that, Olivia. Uh, Olivia! Hmm? Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Auntie. I'm afraid I wasn't listening. Oh, must you just sit there and stare out of the window? What are you dreaming about? I was just thinking... I often wonder, on a very fine morning like this, what it'll be like for night to fall. (laughs) I never can, yet it's got to. (laughs) You'd do better thinking about catching a husband. Where's that man of yours, that Hubert Lowry? Oh, he's off for a walk, I suppose. Shall I read some more, Mum? Oh, yes, dear. Attempts had been made to eradicate fingerprints with a knife. (laughs) The head had been severed by a skilled person, possibly a butcher. Oh, dear, my heart's beating like anything. Uh, No more, Danny, no more. All right, Mother of mine. It's time for your afternoon stroll anyway. Off to your room and make yourself pretty for your Danny boy. Uh, Yes, dear, I won't be a minute. Oh, you needn't wheel me, Olivia. Heaven knows you nor anyone else gave me any attention until Danny came. Hurry back, Mother of mine. I'll have your pills and chocolates ready. What's so funny? I don't know. Rummy old lady. Why'd you whistle that song so much? Why not? I am a pretty little fellow. The papers say that on the day of the murder, an unidentified man was heard walking through the forests singing that song. 
You know, you wouldn't be bad looking without them glasses. Are you playing up to my aunt? Playing up? After her money, I mean. <laughs> you stand a pretty poor chance there, you know. Mm, what do you bet? You never take that cigarette out of your mouth? Oh, you don't like me, do you? No. Everybody else does. You're very conceited, aren't you? Yes. And you're acting all the time, aren't you? Acting? Acting what? Look at the way I can look you in the eyes. I can stare you out. I have a theory. It's the criminals who can look you in the eyes. And the honest people who blush and look away. Oh. You are acting, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. You... You worked at that summer resort where the murdered woman lived, didn't you? Oh, yes. I used to take cigarettes and drinks to her. She was a very lively one. She... I got to go now. Mrs. Bramson will be waiting. But if Danny should come in and get your search in his luggage, Miss Cry. Oh, I'll take the responsibility, Dora. Hello there. Past the old dragon and her white-haired boy along the path, thought I... Oh, I say, what, what's going on? We're searching Danny's luggage, Hubert. Good heavens, Olivia, that's a, that's a bit much. Why say? You, you don't think it was Danny who murdered that woman? Well, I don't know. But it, it was sort of clever business. They still haven't found her head, you know. And he's a, such an ordinary chap. Yes, that's just it. And then suddenly he... He's so extraordinary. Nothing much here, Mum. Just their wallet. With a letter inside it. Oh, let's see. Dear Babyface, my own. Next time you strike Newcastle, okay by me, baby. Signed, Lil. Mm. This is the last bit of luggage, Mum. Shall I open it? Luggage? Looks more like an old-fashioned hat box. Made of leather. Mm -hmm. Heavy, too. It's locked, but I think I can open it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Hubert. What's up? Well, suppose there, there is something in it. By Jove, I never thought of that. Well? Open it. Go ahead. Those are my things. Oh, Danny. Just... <laughs> Could I have it back, please, sir? My wallet, I mean. It's the only one I got. Oh, this? Oh, yes, of course. Well, what did you think of the letter? Letter? Well, you have it in your hand. Means well, does little bit we had a row, she would spy on me. And if there's anything I hate, it's spying. <laughs> Don't you agree, sir? Yes. I'd sooner have anything than a spy. Bar a murderer, of course. What did you say? Bar a murderer, of course. Uh, Olivia, uh, you better deal with all this. It's, it's beyond me. And I'll be getting back to the kitchen, Mom. You were acting again, weren't you? <laughs> is is there something in that hat box? <laughs> yes. A hat, maybe. Did you do it? <laughs> Did you do it? Look outside. It's growing dark. Soon we'll have dinner and Dora will be off to church for evening meeting. And dear Mr. Laurie will be gone. And the dark will come down. Blacker and blacker. Uh, what, you? Well, you're the quiet one. I've been drinking and I feel fine. Have one? I prefer talking. Oh, talking's daft. Doing's the thing. You 
do live in your imagination, don't you? Yes, it's the only way to bear with the awful things you have to do. What awful things? Ah, uh, I haven't had as much to drink as all that. What was your life like at that summer resort? Why are you always concerned with me and my doing? I'm not. It's just that you never talk about it. My life? Yes. Well, the day don't start so good with a lot of spoons that's been in the mouths of gaping fools that looks through me like I was a dirty window, hadn't been cleaned for years. Orders, orders, go here, do this. I was never meant to take orders, never. And just when I think I got a bit of peace, there's somebody locking the door, won't let me go out, talk, 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 won't fork out with no more money, at me, at me, at me, calls me everything, and screams and screams... So nothing keeps that mouth shut. Go on. on. <laughs> I'm too fly for you. You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Why do you lie awake all night? I don't. I sleep. I sleep. Oh, well. no, you don't. And I'll tell you why. Because there's one thing that keeps you awake. Be quiet. One thing you've pushed into the back of your mind, and you can't do any more about it, and you never will. No. And do you know what it is? It's a little thing. A hat box. No. Oh. Only a hat box, but it's rather heavy. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> it's, the, it's the only thing that keeps me awake. Mind you, the only thing. But I don't know what to do. You see, nothing worries me, nothing in the world, only... Only I don't like a pair of eyes staring at me with no look in them. I don't know what to do. I don't know. Oh. Oh, 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 please. Please. Oh. Anybody home? It's that man from Scotland Yard who was here before. Inspector Belsize. All right. I'll deal with him. I'll manage myself all right. You watch me. As the curtain falls on act one of tonight's play, we've had one murder, and maybe Scotland Yard will solve it. But one murder often leads to several more. And who knows, maybe this is the night. Why, Mr. Barnes, sounds like you've been looking over my shoulder. How so, Mr. Seymour? Well, look, right here on this piece of paper in my hand, it says, Men, when morning brings murder because you have to shave, chances are you have wiry whiskers or a tender skin. So try Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Why, Mole gives you a shave as smooth as flying, as trim as a top. Yes, Mole is a heavier cream. The cream that not only softens your whiskers, but holds them up straight as ten pins while your razor cuts them close and clean. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. Mole. And now back to Jeffrey Barnes and act two of Night Must Fall. The dwellers of Mrs. Bramson's cottage have been thrilled and frightened by the finding of a dead woman near the cottage. In spite of the fact that the woman's head was missing, the police have identified her as a Mrs. Shalfont who lived in a nearby summer resort. Our play resumes as Inspector Belsize enters the cottage. Olivia excuses herself, leaving the shaken Danny to confront the inspector alone. Danny, why didn't you tell me you knew the deceased woman? Knew her? Well? Oh. Oh, sir, I... Oh, sorry, it's been in my conscience ever since. So you did know her? Oh, no, sir, it, it wasn't like that. I, 
I avoided her ever after that day. She stopped me, sir. Oh, the brazen way she went at me, sir. But now do you know it, sir? It's, it's a weight off my mind you wouldn't believe. It was the disgust like of nearly getting mixed up with her that's kept me awake nights. You're a bit of a milksop, aren't you? Am I, sir? Well, I'll be going. Oh, oh, there's just one thing, matter of form, you know. If you don't mind, I'll have a quick look through your luggage. No, no, you stay here. I'll get it myself. Yes, sir. Through that door there, sir. I'll find it. Oh, pretty little fella. Everybody. You can't miss my room, sir. Found it all right. Oh, no, what to call me, buddy. Say, Why what have I... we here? This leather hat box seems to be locked. Have you got the key? What's the matter with you? It isn't mine. Not yours? No. Oh? Whose is it, then? I don't know. It isn't mine. Now, look here. I'm sorry to have left you so abruptly, Inspector. Could I get you some tea? Oh, uh, not now, Miss Graham. Now, damn if this isn't yours. <gasps> Why, Inspector, what... What are you doing with my hat box? Yours? But it was in Dan's... Oh, well, Dan's room used to be the storeroom. I'll take it now. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. I'll put it in my wardrobe. It's got all my letters in it. By Jove. I'm afraid I've offended her. Snooping. Well, good night, young fellow. I'll be off. Good night, sir. But in the future, don't keep things from the police. Oh, no, sir. They always find out, you know. Oh, I'm sure they do, sir. Good night. Good night. Inspector. Inspector Burris. Mm. <laughs> And I tell you, Mum, when I walked in from church and saw Danny lying on the floor, everything went topsy-wopsy. Well, I can't understand it. I, I guess the poor boy's been working too hard. Well, I'll be running along now, Mum. It's getting late. And my old mother will be worried if I'm not, not there by ten. Oh, should I take Miss Olivia a tea first? Miss Olivia isn't here. She's left. She left? Yes, some ridiculous nonsense about not spending another night here. Seems she made arrangements to stay with Hubert Lowry and his sister, if you please. <laughs> but, Mum, there has been a murder. Well, I've got Danny to look after me. He's strong as an ox and, and no silly nerves about him. Well, good night then, Mum. Good night, Dora. Uh, Danny? Uh, Danny, come here. I want my chocolates. Danny! Oh, I have to get them myself. Oh, oh Lord, what's that? Danny! Danny! Oh, Danny, he's gone. They've all gone. And they've left me. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, help a poor woman. I, I, I'm going to be murdered. I, I'm going to be murdered. I, oh, who's there? Who's there? Oh, all right, mother of mine. Oh. It's only me, Danny. Oh, Danny. Oh, oh, I'll never forgive you, Danny. Never. Oh, my, my heart. No, 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 it's all right. Oh, all alone I was. Just an old woman calling for help and no, no answer. Oh, the relief when I saw your face. Uh -huh. I'll bet you wasn't half glad, eh? Oh, you're the only one that understands me, Danny. That's what you are. I want a chocolate now. Right you are. Now... Shut your eyes. <laughs> Open your mouth. Oh. oh, Danny. You're the only one. You're a pet. My little chubby face. My baby face. My Danny. <laughs> there. I want to be read to now. 
Wouldn't you like a cushion back of your head first? Oh, no. No, dear. I think you'll be more comfortable with a cushion. I'm a pretty little girl. Everybody knows. Why, what a funny look on your face, dear. You look so kind, smiling like that. Oh. Well, Danny... What are you going to do with that cushion? You're lifting it up, so... Uh, oh. Danny! No! Oh. <laughs> I don't know what you call me, but I'm mighty alive. This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll return you to Act Three of Night Must Fall. You can't fight dandruff effectively with plain water, for all plain water does is remove loose dandruff. And it's exactly the same with most ordinary preparations for the hair. But one product that really does more is double dandrine. It truly works where so many others fail. This is because double dandrine does what such products can't do. It actually kills on contact the germs that many outstanding authorities contend are a cause of a common type of dandruff. You see, double dandrine contains an active antiseptic called Alzan. And it's this special ingredient used by many hospitals because of its remarkable efficiency that makes double dandrine so amazingly effective. Remember, no other hair preparation contains Alzan. You get it only in double dandrine. So try double dandrine and see if you don't agree that most ordinary hair preparations can't compare with its dandruff-combating effectiveness. If you're not satisfied, return the empty bottle and get your money back. Buy double dandrine at your druggist's. I must hurry. Hurry and break up this chair. Then the fire. And they'll think she died in it. Who's there? Oh. You've come back. I... I've never seen a dead body before. I nearly fell over it in the hallway. Like a... sack of potatoes... I thought it was at first. I came back expecting... <laughs> I, I don't know. And here I find you smoking a cigarette. It's so ordinary. What did you come back for? To find you out. I've read a lot about evil. I never expected to come across it in real life. Oh, you didn't have to read so much. I never got through a book yet, but I'll read you all right. Read me? Your mind. You haven't had a drop to drink yet. You feel as if you had. You never knew there was such a secret part inside of you. All that book learning and moral me I here and social me I there. You took that off of the edge of the wood, same as if it... As if it was an overcoat. And you left it there. <laughs> oh, I hate you. Hate you. Oh, no, you don't. You feel the same as I do, sometimes excited and, and light as air. Why, this is my big chance. You're the one I can tell all about myself. You said just now murder's ordinary. Well, it isn't ordinary at all, see? And I'm not an ordinary chap. There's one big difference between me and other chaps that try this game. I'll never be found out. The world's going to hear from me. You wait. But you can't wait. Can you? You mean you're, you're going to... Yes. Aren't you frightened? You ought to be. Don't you think I'll do it? Sorry. I know you will. I just can't realize it. You see, I... 
make up my mind to do a thing, and I do it. And I'm going to take care of you right now. Huh. What's that light in here? It's a light in the woods. Somebody's shining in here. Somebody must be watching the house. Oh, it can't be. Nobody's watching. I'm the one that watches. They've got no call to watch me. I'll go out and tell them that. I know I'm watching. What is it? Behind them trees. Hundreds back of each tree, thousands of eyes. The whole world's on my track after me. The whole world's after me. Why? Why, you stopped. <laughs> acting at last. You're, you're real for the first time. Frightened. Just like a child. Everything. Everything's slipping away from under my feet. Can't you feel it? Starting slow, slow, then hundreds of miles an hour. I'm going backwards, backwards. And there's a wind in my ears, a terrible blowing wind. Everything's going past me like the telegraph falls. All the things I've seen faster and faster and backwards. Back to the day I was born. I can see it coming the day I was born. I'm, I'm going to die. No. No, you're not. No, it'll be all right. You won't die. I'll tell him I made you do it. I'll tell lies. I'll, I'll do anything. It's a... All right, Danny. Stand up without your wrists. But she isn't dead, Inspector. She... She just went out there in the hall. I don't know why. She's sleeping, maybe. Maybe just sleeping. This will take care of you. There. No! No, Inspector! No, oh, I need him to... No! It. I... No. I'm the fella. Anything I'm concerned in, I run myself. If there's going to be any... Putting me on a public platform to answer questions? I'll do it myself. I'll manage all right. I get you. Like a bit of limelight, eh? You're not going to believe what she said, are you, Inspector? No. Plenty of women who don't know any better get hysterical about a lad in your position. You'll find them queuing up all right when the time comes. Will they now? Come along. I have a motor waiting. <laughs> you know, I'd like something now I never wanted before. A long walk, all by myself. And just when I can't have it. <laughs> That's contrary, isn't it? <laughs> you, miss. <laughs> Come here a minute now. Danny. Danny. Remember me. Remember me with this. <laughs> there, my girl. <laughs> Never say you've not been kissed. Well, I'm going to be hanged in the end. <laughs> but they'll get their money's worth at the trial. You wait. The original music for the Mole Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sandler. Night Must Fall was written by Emlyn Williams and adapted for radio by Don Agger. Virginia Field and Ian Martin were starred in tonight's program. And now this is Dan Seymour saying good night until next Friday at this same time when the Mystery Theater <laughs> presents a rollicking mystery comedy, Follow That Cab. <laughs> This program came to you from our NBC studios in Radio City, New York. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>